not gonna like jinx us too much, but this is a very, very, very good look for us as far as weather. A lot of people think that marine science is just whales and dolphins and turtles. And don't get me wrong, that world is out there, but this, this is where the magic happens. Right now we're putting together a bunch of equipment for a pretty intense little research cruise that we're doing. My name's Grant, I'm one of the chief scientists for one of the groups on board. And if you didn't think that looking at the ocean was important, I think I'm gonna change your mind about that today. We'll have a little bit of fun too, don't worry. I'm welcome to see Saturday. Here's what this video is supposed to be about. Um, I was going to tell you about how I'm the party chief of this like sonar mapping crew. And we're jumping on here to uh, map some stuff. We're gonna have some problems and we're gonna solve them and then we're gonna get out there and map something really cool and show you like a shipwreck and you know, it had been really fun. And then we are gonna also talk about how like this stuff supports like archaeology and about how this stuff is really important because the mid-atlantic here off of delaware is a perfect like oceanographic analog to the south china sea and so you can see why geopolitically it's probably really good for us to understand a lot about the mid-atlantic here so that we understand a lot about the south china sea for the navy it's amazing what a little bit of weather can do. <laughs> so to back up a little bit, this cruise was supposed to be me piggybacking on top of this other party that was actually paying for the boat. Um, they had a, a big instrument frame full of things that they kind of lost. Uh, they know where it is, but the, the buoy didn't deploy correctly. So they need to send an ROV down which is a little underwater drone to go down and snap a, a, a lifting bridle to it and then pull it up on deck and come home. It's about a hundred miles offshore though so um, and it's heavy so we needed a big boat and on top of that I was going to come on and map on the way out and map on the way back and um, see some cool things. We we're gonna stop by a pretty cool site. The weather shifted us back three days so the ROV team, the underwater drone, had to cancel. So now there's no way for us to get that instrument frame off the seafloor. It's a, it's a thousand feet down. So I just became now the mapper in chief and now the ROV pilot because we have an ROV at our lab that is able to do exactly what we need. There's a slight complication. This instrument frame is 300 meters down from the surface of the ocean on the seafloor. We have an ROV that is rated exactly to 1,000 feet, 300 meters. The problem is we have a 300 meter cable. So in theory, <laughs> if we stretch that cable all the way out, without any like scope we could we couldn't even get the end of the cable off the back of the boat so we could probably even like see the, the the lander like in our sonar but we couldn't get to it so we need a longer cable so we may have a solution though we have a few short test cables for this ROV on top of a 300 meter cable that we have and in theory we should be able to link them together 
and hopefully the voltage drop over the long cable isn't too bad. So today our fingers are so crossed everywhere because hopefully we've found a cable that is long enough and we're going to be able to string a few things together and make this work. And I'm still the mapper in charge so now I'm kind of, I'm the guy. And I'm trying to make this video so we'll see how this goes. Um, we need your luck right now so instead of like so you can't like give us luck but if you subscribe that would probably be enough just saying thanks hey is there any chance we can get an extension cord out here like a surge protector yeah stench give me the extension is this plugged in christian Yes. Are you sure? Yes. They always seem like they can't get out of their own way. Yeah. You know what, Christian? I would trust this fell out. Yeah, see, it fell out. <laughs> it's shit. I plugged it in over here. Oh, I know that won't work. Yeah. I just used it. Everything on pro? I don't know what they do with the money. They ain't oh, giving it to us. <laughs> Huh? It sounds like electricity's flowing. Did you hear it crackle? <laughs> Did it crackle yeah, when you, you put it in there? Yeah. Yes. I told you it worked. Wow. Yeah, oh, try it. Yeah. Oh, Did you hear that? Dude. It's that light bulb. It's the, no, it's the plug. The light bulb flickered. Oh, oh It won't work. Is this about to work? It should. Are the lights on? Longer. How about this end? I don't see it. Yep. <gasps> there you go. I see light there. No way. Dude, this is with like, this is with like a lot of cable. Way more cable than we would need. So I think we're in business. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <shit. laughs> we're gonna get it. Okay. <laughs> Sketchy outlets aside, this was a big breakthrough for us. But we had a lot more work to do before we could leave. This was a brand new sonar, so we had to measure the offsets between the sonar and the GPS on the ship so that the data was as accurate as possible. And I had some networking issues that I was able to iron out. After I got that stuff fixed, it was time to address the elephant in the room, how to clip the lifting line to the lander using our ROV. Are you worried about a thousand? Hey man, we'll get it exact. I'd be hand drilling with the. Uh... I know you would. With just a little bit of 3D printing wizardry by Howard here and a few simple operations on the mill by me, it took us only about an hour to make a brand new attachment for the manipulator arm that's on our ROV to be able to release this carabiner on the lander. And things are looking pretty good in the lab. That's a can-do attitude. A can-do man. Yeah. These work. cables that we jerry-rigged together for the ROV are actually weight-bearing, so we had to figure out a way to take the load off of the connectors. Here, Christian and I are hooking up some Yale grips, is what they're called. They're really cool little straps that provide strain relief for a load-bearing cable. I think I just put it... Huh. He's gonna stop first. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're good, man. Dude, do we wanna like... Yeah, that's why I was asking, you wanna... If we're, if we're gonna do that, we should do it with tape. Get rid of these. It's cause tape is more forgiving, and if it does... Yeah, it'll just snap. Yeah, yeah, okay.
the that gives you an idea of like, what's gonna happen. Yeah, that felt great. Quick update here. We are pretty much um, pretty much ready to roll. We've got another four hours until we're actually going to leave. But we're just like finalizing some networking things and um, just making sure everything's talking. They're putting in the keel pod for the multi-beam right now and then we are gonna roll. So not gonna like jinx us too much, but this is a very, very, very good look for us as far as weather. So Fingers crossed. Whenever I work with people who aren't in the marine industry or connected to the ocean in some way, they're always so surprised with how superstitious I am. This is exactly why. At this point, we were about to start dropping lines and we had a, just a random technical gremlin with the computer system that runs the very sophisticated autopilot that the ship relies on to stay on station while we have the ROV in the water. And so that was it. The engineers who were awesome diagnosed it to being this part that the manufacturer couldn't supply for another two weeks. So that was it. But fortunately for the ship, this was their last cruise of the year. And after this, they were headed off to Norfolk, Virginia to get pulled for a massive midlife refit. Mm -hmm.